Shed engineering, but not as you know it. Making the valve gear. Hello there, Alan Plum here with a little more from Shed Engineering. In this video I'm going to try and explain how the valve gear works and how it was made. No, you don't have to worry, it's not rocket science, we're just going to use simple everyday tools and the average bloke will be able to knock this together in a weekend without any superhuman powers. Now hopefully everybody's seen the video where we made the piston and the cylinder and did the testing. I'm still quite amazed that it lifted three and a half pounds. And there you can see the holes in the cylinder that have been drilled and filed out ready to accept both ports and here you see the arrangement with the inlet pipe coming in feeding the main valve tube that leads up to the top inlet and the bottom inlet and there you see the top inlet which is just a piece of 22 mil copper pipe swedged down to a rectangle cylinder I've actually cut some very narrow strips off the 4 inch soil pipe, uh, split them, wrapped them around to make like a flange. Um, hopefully I'll paint that silver to make it look like metal um, once I get further on. I've got some 22mm copper pipe and I had to make a, a bit of a former I made a square a oblong former so that I could swage that down in the vise gently hammer it to make the um, the inlet port. The reason I've swaged them down is so that they uh, don't protrude too far down the, the cylinder and interrupt the uh, the stroke of the the piston. So once one end had been swaged down we had to file down both inlets to the exact profile of the 22mm valve tube 
that's actually a better photograph there. I soon realised that the decision to swage them down made it far more difficult because now the inlets wouldn't swivel round and so the valve tube that fitted onto the inlets had to be absolutely 90 degrees to uh, line up with the bottom one. So then we had to file out the corresponding half round hole in the valve tube. Here I've got it in the vise between two thick pieces of cardboard. I haven't got any V uh, v blocks or anything. Now remember just the other side of that hole where I'm filing that's where the valves will be sliding up and down so I've got to make sure the inside uh, is absolutely smooth. And before we continue a word about workshop safety and shed sanity when making a video. There is no more important rule than to remember to turn off the phone so her indoors doesn't disturb you. Uh, cutting another one, filing another one. Right, I've got the two half round holes cut for the two ports. Now they have to be as big as possible because otherwise you're going to restrict the airflow. So there's very little metal to solder to. The inlet pipe is obviously coming in end on. I'm no expert at soldering and at this point I've got no idea at all whether this will be a success. But don't be put off. I'm sure you could create exactly the same thing using plastic ho overflow pipe. I'm sure you could use something like araldite and electrical tape and do the joint that way. Obviously you have to make sure it's absolutely square. Then apply some flux around the joint. I also make sure that my solder's clean. There can soon be oxidized, oxidization on it. So I also clean my solder. Gradually warm both uh, components up. Gradually heat up uh, both components and then apply the solder. And here we've got the valve assembly held in the vise by the inlet tube which we've just soldered. The two inlets are in place at either end and I've just got a piece of wood on top uh, to try and hold them in place. Now that's a better, clearer picture. Can you see where the flux has really cleaned around the joint? Now soldering works best when there's capillary action. That's when fluid is drawn into a very narrow gap. So you must make sure the parts are very close fitting. Now watch where I touch the solder on the right of the joint and, comp and capillary action pulls it right around the back, down and then up over to, to appear on the left. And I'm just touching it there and look it's come all the way around and almost joined up and so I've just got to touch it in and that should be a nice joint while it's still hot I'm just trying to add a little bit more just to give it some strength but I mustn't let any run onto the inside if any has run onto the inside it's going to be a nightmare to clean out so we now have the inlet pipe, the valve tube and the top and bottom inlet all nicely soldered and luckily no solder ran onto the inside. A big afterthought was uh, fixing it to the cylinder but luckily the inlets protrude onto the inside 
so a couple of saw cuts and I was able to bend out a little bracket and bolt them on. So now on to the valves or what I've been calling bobbins. These were made from fiberglass resin, just uh, two part resin with a resin and hardener, a short piece of 22mm pipe sealed off at the bottom with cardboard and hot glue and then the resin poured in and left to set. Carefully cut through the copper and extract the valve. Then it needs to be drilled down through the centre and cut to length. It needs to be at least 20mm to cover the inlet port but it can be a little bit longer and I did cast several at the same time. I then made a small connector two holes, one threaded for the valve stem and uh, another plain hole for the linkage and then we can proceed and fit the valves onto the threaded rod. Valve rod with the two valves on and just to try and show you the the principle that will drop down into the valve tube and when it's right down in the bottom position this will be blocked by the valve but air would come in the inlet and through into the bottom of the cylinder and when it's in the top position then this inlet will be blocked off closed and air will be coming in the inlet up and into the top of the cylinder so there's no plans I'm designing it uh, as I go along it's very much trial and error I've seen that type of valve um, in books and so on so now we're going to see whether uh, that actually goes in. And that's looking okay. Perhaps a little bit of ply, but I would imagine with a bit of grease that will seal up. So now we can carry on and do some more to the uh, valve gear which will lift that up and down. So we just have a rough rough mock up, a crank onto the crankshaft, a push rod onto an L shaped lever, a rod through a block operating a crank which then lifts the valve up and down. So we'll get tidied up and uh, get the vacuum set up ready for uh, testing. Yes! Yes! Oh! Come on, my beauty. Go on. Go on, go on. Look at that. Go on, girl. Well, look at that. I'm absolutely delighted. I'm absolutely over the moon. And she's running for the first time. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching.